If you have questions about climate change, this is the place to be to get them answered. The International Conference on Climate Change is an international meeting of scientists, economists, and other experts to discuss the causes and consequences of climate change. Scientists who are coming together for this deserve a lot of attention. Real science, real choices. Uh, most of what you read in the newspapers, much of what you see on television, that's not accurate science. It's been, frankly, dumbed down for public consumption, so it's very alarmist in its tone. Real science is different from that. The real scientists who are doing the real research on climate are the people that we want to focus and feature, uh, focus on and feature at this conference. If climate is changing rapidly. If those changes are caused by human activities, and if they have a negative consequence on human health or the environment, then we have real choices that we have to make. We've been doing this for 15 years. We've, we've looked at the research intensively. It's our conclusion that, in fact, most of the change in climate is natural, not man-made. Scientists cannot predict future climate conditions. The technology, the science, simply isn't there. Some of the really interesting speakers at this year's conference, of course, uh, President Vaclav Klaus uh, is our leading dinner speaker. Um, President Klaus uh, is one of very few world leading political figures who has been willing to take a very courageous and outspoken stance on climate change. He is willing to say publicly what many world leaders are saying privately. He's a fantastic speaker. The audience always loves him. We also have a number of uh, former NASA engineers and scientists who are going to be speaking. These individuals recently wrote a letter to the head of NASA uh, asking that NASA stop publishing alarmist and scientifically unproven statements about climate change, challenging NASA to back down from its alarmist, scary, doomsday sorts of statements on climate change. We've got a couple of Apollo astronauts. So we have Harrison Schmidt. He's the first scientist who walked on the moon. And Walter Cunningham, another Apollo astronaut, is going to be on the program. If you're an astronaut, uh, you are truly in the top half of half of half a percent of people in the entire world. I mean, these guys are courageous. They're modern day heroes. To stand on the moon and look out and see Earth, uh, I'm sure is a life transforming moment for someone like that to speak then with that depth of knowledge and understanding and wisdom about climate, I think is tremendous. We cover hard science. We'll have uh, physicists, astrophysicists, and uh, meteorologists and climatologists arguing about uh, how much heat is trapped in the atmosphere, how important is carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas, uh, how much heat escapes from the top of the atmosphere, what are the feedback loops. This is all pretty heavy science and we'll have a, a series of world-renowned experts talking about those sorts of issues. We have panelists who are experts on solar energy and wind power, on fracking, on coal and natural gas, um, various aspects of energy policies. We need engineers, we need uh, even political scientists and some of the other social sciences giving us insight into how as a society we need to adjust and change to climate change or to public policies that are passed out of fear of climate change. Climate change is one of the biggest public policy issues of our generation. It's a huge controversy and you don't often have an opportunity to meet face to face with some of the scientists who are on the front edge of research on such a controversial issue. If you think that it is a crisis and you want to talk to people about just how we can avert this crisis, this is the conference you should attend. This is where the answers are going to be put forward. The Heartland Institute uh, was recently targeted by Peter Glick uh, as part of the uh, fake gate scandal uh, because we do so much on climate. Uh, the Heartland Institute has published more books and videos and booklets and special reprints than any other organization in the world bringing up the questions about well, just how much do we know about climate and how true is it and whether or not it's a crisis. So it's been our high profile and our effectiveness that made us a target of environmental activists, uh, all, not just in the United States but all around the world.